Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is 10 to Life where we're talking all things true crime. So if you're brand new and you're stopping by for the first time, welcome and I hope you enjoy today's case coverage. So the case we're covering today is one that is a little bit older, not older I should say, but like it's not one that's literally happening in this moment in time, but it is absolutely mind-blowing. It has so many different twists and turns and it's one of those ones where it's like a case that makes you step back and think are people really this stupid because today's case is a case about a murder for hire gone wrong horribly wrong and the suspect that we are talking about is dahlia dipolito so guys let's jump right in Turn to life with annie elise starts right now. Dahlia DiPolito was a real estate agent and escort when she met her husband, Mike DiPolito. Mike was a married man at the time, but he had called an escort and that escort happened to be Dahlia. It was a whirlwind romance, like any escort romance would be, I guess. I don't know. Mike and his then wife, Maria, of course, filed for a divorce as a result of his infidelity, which can't blame Maria there. If I found out my husband was just ringing up escorts and falling in love with them, I'd be divorcing his ass too. Take note, Jeremiah. And just five days after Mike and Maria were officially divorced, Mike and Dahlia got married. This was on February 2nd, 2009. The two of them lived in a beach town in Florida, and it's a beach town that is in Palm Beach County. Back in 2009, the city had a population of around 68,000 people, and the city is known for its beaches, fishing, and all things outdoors. And Mike didn't have a perfect past. In fact, he had been caught in a telemarketing scheme in which he was actually fraudulently getting money from people by having them invest in foreign currency and just all sorts of ick and bad news. So he served two years in prison and he was on probation when he met Dahlia and he was given a 28 year probation sentence. That is a pretty hefty probation sentence. And I don't exactly know the details as to why he was given that long of a probation sentence if he only served two years in prison, but I'm imagining that it's because it was a federal crime. So Dahlia claims that she didn't know that and had no idea about his history until a parole officer showed up at the house, but Mike maintains that Dahlia knew everything right from the get-go. So it's interesting that those stories aren't aligning. Nevertheless, the two of them seemed to have an incredible chemistry together, and they had a lot of love between them. Dahlia says that they specifically enjoyed watching reality shows like Cheaters, I don't know guys, you see the irony there, and Real Housewives of New York. She says that Mike always wanted them to be on a reality show too, which feels so weird because I feel like men usually avoid reality TV like the plague and that it's the women who push them to be on these shows. But apparently, Mike always wanted them to be on a reality show, which I don't know why, because if you have a lot of skeletons in your closet or you're still doing shady things like we're about to get into, why would you want cameras around for that? And the shady things I'm referring to is that one time after taking Dolly at a dinner, Mike was actually pulled over and almost arrested when the officer found some white powder in his cigarette package. The officer let him go after Mike continued to maintain that it wasn't his. Another time, police received an anonymous tip that he was actually a drug dealer. So after the police kept receiving these anonymous calls, the white powder being stashed in that cigarette box, Mike actually began to get super worried and he decided to transfer the title of his house into Dahlia's name to protect his assets. He felt like all of his sketchy behavior was catching up to him and that the walls were starting to close in a little bit. Everything changed six months into their marriage when police realized that Dahlia was trying to hire someone to murder her husband, Mike. Now, why would she do this? And the bigger question, how'd she get caught? So one of the men that Dahlia used to go to when she needed something was a guy by the name of Mohammed. Mohammed and Dolly had known each other for years, and she would go to him if she ever needed anything, whether it was money, someone to listen to her, etc. On July 31st, 2009, Dolly reached out to Mohammed to talk about her marriage, and she started telling him that 
she was being abused, that she needed to get out, that she needed him to help her. And she goes on to say that because the abuse is so bad, she just can't simply divorce him and she needs to have him killed. I don't have my red flag nearby, guys. If I had it, I would be waving it because word to the wise and word to all of you married people out there, you can always divorce them. You don't need to resort to murder. Just mm, own up divorce them, don't take the coward's way out and try to have them killed or kill them yourselves. Anyways, so she meets up with Mohammed at a gas station parking lot where Dahlia then asks him point blank to kill Mike or to help her find someone who will. Mohammed, who clearly is very smart, went right to the police and told them where they proceeded then to interview him. Okay, tell us what happened. Uh, She asked to find someone who can kill her husband for her. Um, I said, uh, basically, no, I don't. She tells me, though, he's uh, the nicest, sweetest nerd, but she can't stand him. So at first, we weren't sure what we had. Do you know where she lives? No. At the time, we didn't know what to believe. Her last name, I don't know. Here's a gentleman who walks in. According to him, he's had a sexual relationship with this young lady, but he wasn't sure exactly where she lived or her last name. Just five. She's maybe five, six, five, seven. Uh, Dark, black hair, green eyes. She's a good-looking girl, really good-looking girl, actually. The fact that somebody was going to get killed, it was bothering his conscience. Did she ask you to find someone for her? Yes. So after that first interview, law enforcement realizes that they're going to need to talk to Mohammed again. What cops want Mohammed to do next is bold and risky. They want to set up a sting. And they say, we want you to put a wire on, and we want you to get her to outline this plan to kill her husband. So Mohammed morphs into a confidential informant. The officers decided to have Mohammed catch her in this plan the next day by having him take a recording device and have a conversation about the murder and a hitman with Dahlia. We have the informant contact the suspect by phone and set up a meeting so we can ID her. The mobile gas station was one of those places where they've met before in the past, so we decided to make out the location. All right, you good to go? Yeah, I'm good to go. All right, good. So police outfit Muhammad's car with some cameras, and they put a wire on him. And a few seconds later, she begins talking about getting her husband killed. There's no small talk. Muhammad and Dahlia launch right into a secretly recorded conversation detailing Dahlia's murderous intentions. At first, it seems like her motive might be Mike's money. Honestly, you're not worried that seriously you're going to kill him over that much money? It's not even over the money. Like, it's not even about the money. Dahlia has no idea that every word coming out of her mouth is being caught on camera. OK, well, you know I'm trying to say is, this guy's a professional. It's not no, he doesn't get it done, that's it. It's right. Done. This is where he actually says he was going to introduce her to a hitman. I know him, you know, like, he's good at it. We realized that this guy was credible. But and now, how am I supposed to know what day he's going to do it? We were shocked how easily she talked about getting her husband killed. He might tell you, oh, it's like to get out of town or something for a day. I'm not going out of town. You even hear during the conversation, her talk about no one would ever believe that she could be capable of murder. His mom is not going to get suspicious of you or anything Why like that. Why me? Do you know what she telling somebody, that, you know, nobody's going to be able to point a finger at me. She ended up bringing $1,200 in cash. She believed that that money was going to be given to the hitman to buy a gun. Yeah, really. Right, I'll try. She also bought two pictures. I have a picture of him right now. Yeah. You're sure everything else is okay? Yeah. You're sure, sure. You know, what more sure can you want? You're planning a murder. Come on, stop, yo. The secret conversation is just so, so creepy. She is just so nonchalant about it, and I find it really interesting that she said that she was not going to go out of town, that she wanted to be nearby, because if you were trying to get away with murder, wouldn't you want to be as far away as possible from the crime and the crime scene so you wouldn't be looked at in any type of suspicious way, especially knowing that they always look to the spouse first, usually, like 99.9 times out of 100. She honestly seems overconfident, over cocky throughout this entire conversation. 
but officers were 10 steps ahead of Dahlia's cocky self and already had an undercover cop ready to pose as a hired hitman and catch this girl. After Mohammed Shihada alerts Boynton Beach police about Dahlia DiPolito's deadly plan, Dahlia meets face to face with that hitman. What she doesn't know is this hitman she's about to meet is actually Witty Jean, Boynton Beach police officer who is working undercover on this case. They um, agreed on a location which was a CVS parking lot in the city of Boynton Beach. Pretty much parking this exact spot right here. We had two cameras in the car. The cameras were positioned in the back seat. You can't help being a bit nervous as you're doing this. Remember, there's a thousand things that can go wrong. She parked and got into the car and she said, hey. Hey. Dahlia shows up to the meeting with Witty, and she's wearing a cute little sundress. She's almost flirtatious with him in the car. We wanted to make sure that she caught my attention in my eyes. The way she was dressed, pretty much, I'm like, okay, you know, she wants to show off her body. So, you know, I have to give her a compliment. I told her, hey, you know, you look good. Hey, you look good. She really thought she was talking to a hitman, and to her, this was something that had to be done. Well, that's up to you. Maybe I need to We were shocked how easily she talked about getting her husband killed. She gave me uh, definitely a sense of urgency. Uh, you cannot wait to make it happen. If you're gonna make it happen, you have to make it happen this week. I'll give you a quick breakdown of what I've done so far. We talked about money, uh, how much money she's gonna pay me. Uh, at one point she said, well, I thought that I'll, you know, I already gave you the $200. So I went to buy my heat, my gun, okay? A couple hundred, you know, for other people to do things. And what I mean? When I had to explain to her, $200 is nothing. I had to buy a gun. I had to buy a phone, I had to buy this car. As she starts talking, what's going on in the minds of the police officers is, wow, this woman is real, this plot is real. As a matter of fact, I've already spent more money, you know, just to get it here. Right. Trying to tell her, look, however, which way you want it done, I'll do it. So I just want to make sure that, you know, this is what you want. She wants you to do it. When she's meeting with the hitman, he's telling her, look, there is no turning back. When I leave you today, you have no way to reach me. I explained to Dahlia that after today, she wouldn't be able to find me to cancel this whole plan that we put together. When it's done, you know, you have to have an option to change your mind. And that's when Dahlia DiPolito says the phrase that goes around the world. I'm positive, like 5,000% sure. Like, okay. No, there's no, like, I'm, I'm determined already. I'm positive, like, 5,000% sure. Her line is classic. I am, like, 5,000% sure, right? So it's, you know, she is, she is so committed to this. Like, 5,000% sure. I didn't think she was going to be uh, that open. I'm 5,000% sure. When I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. A lot tougher than what I look. I know you're like, oh, what a cute little girl, whatever. You know, but I'm, I'm not. That, that. She told me she may look like an innocent little girl, but she's a whole lot tougher than she looks. The most surprising thing about my meeting with Dahlia was how adamant she was in making sure that this was done. All right, one good morning, Brooklyn. By the time you get back from the gym, you're going to find a dead body in the house. All right. Now, remember how Dahlia says that Mike wanted to be on a reality show? Well, if that was accurate, his wish was about to come true because the show Cops happened to be filming in town that week. And guys, I cannot make this stuff up. Now, for those of you who have been living under a rock and aren't familiar with Cops, although I'd assume that most of you know exactly what Cops is, Cops is one of the longest shows in history that is still ongoing. It started all the way back in 1989, and producers basically go city to city. They follow different officers in real time, in real life calls and cases, and have it all on body cam footage and with camera footage. I mean, it is just to the max. And this beach town that they lived in was a city that the show had wanted to follow. And luckily for them, the police department had decided to let this murder for hire plot play out and be the starring headline for them. So all of this was indeed being recorded for a reality show. 
August 5th, 2009 was the morning of the planned murder. Dahlia had paid the undercover officer $7,000, so the plan was a go. She left for the gym early, and the plan was for him to kill Mike and make it look like a burglary had gone wrong. But while she was at the gym, police were actually setting up a fake crime scene at the house. They taped off corners, they brought all their investigative trucks, supplies, and captured everything on camera. An officer had called Dahlia and told her that something had happened and that she needed to get to the house right away. And everyone was in position and ready for her arrival. When she got there, the officer went to tell her that Mike was in fact dead. I'm Sergeant Ramsey. I'm, I'm the one that called you. Thank you for coming. I'm sorry to call you. Listen, we had a report of a disturbance at your house and there were shots fired. Is your husband Michael? Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am. He's been killed. <laughs> He's been killed, man. I'm sorry. No, no, he's not. Listen. No, no. Try to calm down. No, Listen, no, right now what no, we, do, we need to get you to no, the station. No, we need to get you to no, our police station. I, want to see we, I can't let you stand, man. We have to do our job. No, if you want us to find his killer, okay? No, we need you to calm down. No, I'm going to no, need you to go with these detectives, okay? Does he have enemies? Is there anyone that would want to hurt him? Okay, who would want to hurt him? Witnesses said they saw a black male running from me. I can't let you see him, ma'am. Ma'am, I cannot do this right now. Ma'am, I can't do it. Detective Yopi, I need you. I need you to take her to the station. I can't. Ma'am, go with these detectives. If you want to help your husband, okay? If you want to help your husband, you need to go to the station with these gentlemen and tell us everything you know about who he knows, who he's connected to. Don't worry, we've already taken care of dogs with animal control for right now. Everything's under control. And we'll take care of everything else, okay? Thank you, guys. The one thing that I found the most interesting was that the officer hadn't even gotten the words out of his mouth yet before she started screaming. Obviously, this chick had her routine down, but not quite good enough. It's interesting how much she wanted to see his body, almost like she wanted absolute confirmation that he was, in fact, dead. Of course, they took her down to the station to talk to her and to try to figure out who this killer was and continue this whole charade. The interview wasn't super long, though, because police already knew everything that they needed to. They were just trying to let it ride out before actually arresting her. And if you ask me, that is pretty genius that they let her think that she had actually gotten away with it. Just get, we, need, we need to get your husband's killer, ma'am. A few minutes later... Boynton Beach detectives ushered Dahlia into a police interrogation room. At this time, she believes that we're investigating the fact that her husband was killed, and we still make her want or believe that she's not a suspect. And we give her an opportunity to talk to us and give us some information to assist us in the investigation. Although still tearful, Dahlia did her best to help. And she starts going through all of this. You know, my husband was into shady things, and she gives all these reasons why people would want to have him killed. He's been trying to get off probation, mm -hmm. and it's just been nothing but problems the whole time that he's been trying to get off. Um, people weren't happy that he was getting off probation. She uh, talks about her, how her husband had enemies. Meanwhile, Michael was in the next room watching everything unfold on a closed circuit video monitor. I'm just watching it and they're like asking questions to me. Did you know? And I'm like, no. I said, trust me, I had no idea. He loved her and he was blinded by that. But watching Dahlia in the interrogation room trying to divert suspicion from herself, he wasn't blind anymore. That was Michael's aha moment. It all came together for him and he realized, aha, Dahlia's the one that's been behind all these mysterious anonymous calls to the police. I wasn't happy about it, but it was a little bit of relief. And when it came to his wife's performance, the ex-con was even a little impressed. I gotta give the girl credit. Like, she didn't crack, you know? <laughs> like, she sat there and sat quiet, which I can't even believe it. But how would Dahlia react when the detectives brought in the fictional hitman? in handcuffs. I put my head down, well, I'm sorry, I failed you type of deal. Because at that point, she still didn't know whether I was a cop or not. You know who this guy is? No. You've never seen him before? I've never seen him before, ever. I said, wow, you know, but she played that very well. But moments later, the detectives let Dahlia in on the secret. She was the one being played. That's an undercover police officer. We found everything that you did recorded everything that you did. You're going to jail 
for solicitation of first degree murder of your husband. I didn't do anything. Did you hear what I just told you? I heard what you said, but I didn't Everything, do anything. listen to me. Everything has been recorded. You were photographed when you sat in his car. She did not react to that. I mean, she was, I think, in shock. It still didn't register in her head what was going on. She just keeps telling them that she wants to go home, she wants to go home, and that she didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything. Don't tell me you didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You're going to jail today. Then, as the detectives cuffed Dahlia and placed her under arrest, they brought Michael to the doorway of the interrogation room. Oh, my God. Alive. Come here, please. Come here. Mike, come here. Come here, please. Come here. She wanted him to come inside the room, and of course, he wouldn't. I didn't do anything. I heard you. Mike, come here, please. Come here. Okay. After she was arrested for the solicitation of murder, things started to make sense for Mike. All of these anonymous police calls that had been called in were actually called in by Dahlia because she wanted Mike to get arrested so that she could have the house and all of the money to herself. Because remember, he transferred the assets over to her. But when that didn't work and when that plan failed, she needed to come up with a more permanent plan, hence a murder plot, because nothing is more permanent than death. So after being booked, they brought her in to see if she would actually admit to it. And of course she didn't, which is just wild considering all of the evidence that they had against her. Once she was booked on solicitation charges, the detectives brought Dahlia back to the interrogation room for another statement. I actually um, ended up interviewing her to see if she would come, you know, clean with what happened. The answer was no. Why did you want Michael killed? I never thought I wanted him killed. Yes, you did. It's on tape. It's on tape a lot, so you did. I didn't say that I wanted him killed. I didn't. In the face of copious physical evidence, she continues to deny. And her denial continued even when confronted with actual audio of her conversation with the undercover officer. Was that your voice or not? You're treating me like a criminal, and I'm not. I'm, I'm not, like, I'm not that kind of person. I'm just not. In that instant, you can see the level of delusion that she is operating under. But there was one thing that Dahlia could not continue to delude herself about. If I'm not going home, then I'd like to speak with an attorney, please. Okay, there you go. That's fine. All right, based on that statement, this is going to end our interview, okay? You understand? Can I please don't make my phone call? After making her phone call, the Boynton Beach police walked Dahlia out in handcuffs and placed her in the patrol car that would take her to the Palm Beach County Jail. Watching the interview really would make you wonder if she really does believe her own lies because she seems pretty convincing to herself. Her first phone call to Mike after getting settled into the jail was explosive. Take a listen. I couldn't help you. 
Obviously, she seemed super agitated and delusional. Why would he call an attorney for her after she tried to kill him? After calling Mike, she called her mom. And that call was another agitated call. Hello? Mom, I'm in jail. I know, Dalia. I know. I I'm find out. Okay. I know. Okay, who do you want me to call? I need, what you, to call? I need you to call Mike in New York, please. I, I call already and I call Dalia. 
everybody knows what is that you want me to do. Where are you exactly? I'm in the county jail. I need you to call. What did Mike say? Is he coming? Everybody's coming, Dale. We're going to go ahead and get your lawyer. Okay? Don't worry. Don't worry. Where are you? Are you in Gangwa? Yes, I'm here, Mom. Mike said this to me. Okay, Dale. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You didn't. I know you didn't. I know you didn't. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get They showed me pictures. They showed me a picture. Interesting how worried she was about him being in the house after she just found out that she was facing years in prison. I mean, priorities, guys. Am I right? Why are you so worried about him being in the house when you are going to prison, girl? Dolly was released the next day on a $25,000 bond and went home on house arrest to await trial. Mike then filed for divorce, so it looked like it wasn't really a happily ever after after all. During the proceedings for both, a lot of crazy information came out. There had been another man that Dahlia was talking to all along, and it was her ex named Mike Stanley. That must be complicated to mix up the two Mikes or to like make sure you're not mixing them up. They had rekindled, and as it turns out, he was helping her with this plot to get her current husband, Mike, arrested because she wanted to be with Mike 2.0. It's crazy least text messages between Dipolito and a boyfriend texted in the weeks leading up to the murder plot. Dahlia, love you so much and I love the way you are with me. I love the attention. Boyfriend, I'm glad. Baby, you are numero uno, really, and I always want to show you. Dipolito planned a fake meeting at the courthouse, tricking her husband into signing their house into her name only. Dahlia, need someone professional to meet me and Mike at the Miami courthouse at 2 and act like a legal secretary and take a paper from us. I'll pay them 500 Michael Dipolito's divorce lawyers say the text messages only bolstered their case. Clearly show that the entire marriage was a fraud, that Dahlia's sole intent the entire time was to take Michael's house take his money, and dispose of him at whatever cost necessary. The lawyers say while Michael DiPolito thought he was headed for a fairy tale marriage, Dahlia was texting thoughts of love to another. Dahlia, soulmates is what we are. We are meant to be together. Do you know I have baby names picked out? I want your child in me. Boyfriend, please don't. I love you and you know I want that when you're ready. Dahlia, I want you, baby. You're my true love. Let me make you happy forever. And then the texts show her trying to get her husband arrested by planting drugs in his car. Dahlia, I love you. Just want my life with you. Let's get this mother arrested. I'm so tired of his blank. We need to strategize the drugs. Baby, we need to make this happen with his arrest by the weekend. I need to be with you. Hate being away from you. And there were lots of other texts that said things like, LOL, baby, I love you, and I only want to F-U-C-K-U. I'll be here waiting for you. You've made me smile and laugh. Haven't done that in forever. I love you. All of these things. 
And another text said, can you call the treasury department and ask them to look up his file, ask if they would freeze his account, his account because he has over $100,000 in there. In total, there were 893 text messages exchanged between Mike Stanley, which is Mike 2.0, and Dahlia. This whole thing was obviously just a disgusting plot for money all along, and she wanted to be with her ex-boyfriend, Mike Stanley. So once her plan with Mike Stanley didn't work, she moved on to Mohammed for help. And new details emerging only proved that even further. In April of 2011, the trial began. The defense's stance was completely insane. The defense argued that it was never the intention for anybody to be harmed. They actually argued that it was a plot to get on reality TV because reality TV has become a way to launch a center stage career. He argued that Dahlia, Mohammed, and Mike were all in on this hoax together, but they also spent time pointing the finger at Mike and trying to turn it around on him. Surprisingly though, Dahlia didn't testify, but Mike was a witness for the prosecution. He testified that Dahlia was supposed to help him pay a $191,000 restitution fee so that he could get his probation lifted. But once he gave a large portion of that money to Dahlia, it disappeared. When Dahlia started buying things, including a Range Rover, she was spending that cash on other things. She didn't care that he was on probation. He also discussed another issue of drugs being planted on his car. He says that when he opened his gas cap door, there was a baggie of pills, who he assumed Dahlia put there after everything else was coming out at the time. He also says that he once drank a Starbucks tea after Dahlia handed it to him. He says he felt terribly ill after it and later found out that the tea had antifreeze in it. The cross-examination got a bit heated when Dahlia's attorney tried to paint Mike as a liar. Weird because he was, wouldn't stop looking over at us, you know? If you were staring at me, I'd think you were a weird guy. Okay. Well, I'm staring at you now, so am I weird? No, you're like a parrot. A parrot? Yeah. What does that mean? I've been called a lot of things. What's a parrot? You know. Come on. You're winking at the judge. Uh, he doesn't know what you mean. What do you mean? Did you do that on probation? Were you on probation? Did you do that on probation? Were you on probation? You know what I'm talking about. I'm just having fun with you. Come on, I'm with you. You having fun yeah. with me? Let me yeah. ask you something. Is, is this fun, Mr. Triglia? This sucks. Okay. <laughs> it, was it fun when you got arrested? No. Was it fun when you went to a court? Horrible. Okay. <laughs> so, is there anything funny about this proceeding at all, Mr. Triglia? The questions you're asking me, some of them, yeah. You don't like them, do you? It's ridiculous. I am not. Here. We're not here because of me. Well, I'm, I might as well, you might as well put me up next. I mean, what are we doing here? Well, wait a minute, Mr. DiPolito. Um, well, you're a prosecute. well, you started it. You're, yeah. a prosec you're a prosecution witness, is that right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you took an oath to tell the truth, right? Yes. And when you were placed on probation, Again, you are presumptively telling the truth, right? Yes. But you've admitted that you're a liar, haven't you? Yeah, I've been dishonest. Yes. Not just when you committed your crime, mm. crimes, but while you're on probation too. You're lying to your probation officer like it's nothing. Mm. Okay. You said no, not okay. <laughs> I guess it's okay with you to lie to your probation officer. But my question is, is, is that something you don't take serious either? I take it very serious. Obviously. Mike is obviously not a perfect person, don't get me wrong, but he sure isn't as bad as someone who tries to hire a hitman for their spouse or somebody who puts antifreeze in their spouse's Starbucks. The text messages were read, but Dahlia denied that they were even hers. It's just so, so crazy. All of the police evidence and videos were combed through before the jury was sent to deliberate. After just three hours, they came back with a guilty verdict. Dahlia did an interview where she said she believed that she wasn't going to be found guilty. However, the jurors were quite shocked by that. Dahlia was sentenced to 20 years. It was deeply into your soul and speaks volumes of the way you were presenting this, and it was uh, quite chilling to witness that. Uh, based upon those factors, then, Ms. DiPolito, I'll accept the uh, uh, verdict of the jury. I'll find you guilty. I'll adjudicate you guilty. And I'm sentencing you to 20 years in the Department of Corrections. I'll give you credit 
for all the time that you've been on in-house arrest. I'll subtract that out. I'm not obligated to do that, but I'll give you credit for that. Thank you, Your Honor. So that would be from the day of arrest. So from the day of arrest through today's date, we'll come off of the sentence. And um, I wish you well. I hope things turn around for you. I hope you're able to make something of your life. You're a young woman. You'll get out of prison. Uh, you'll be a changed person. And hopefully um, you will uh, take that opportunity at that time to, uh, uh, to make the most out of what remains ahead of you. Uh, I don't think restitution is appropriate. I'm not sure that... Uh, let me do it this way. I'll order restitution. I, I, I'll let you all flesh that out. I don't think that uh, there's enough of a nexus between the crime and the money lost by Mr. DiPolito. As much as my heart goes out to him, I, I think he was fleeced uh, as a gullible husband, but I don't think that it's a matter of restitution. But for the record, I'll say restitution, uh, parties to either agree to an amount. Otherwise, I'll, I'll, leave it, I'll reserve jurisdiction on that for 30 days. If nobody approaches me, the amount of restitution will be zero. I said, well, what I'd be interested in is first from the state proving an entitlement to restitution. I don't think you are, but I'll leave the door open for you. I'll also impose the mandatory court costs uh, and uh, I'll reduce that to a judgment. Anything else, State, that you wish for me to do? No, yes. Okay. Thanks. But in 2014, Dahlia's case was thrown out after an appeal and she was granted a retrial on the basis of the jury being improperly selected. And that retrial happened in 2016. At her second trial, her attorney got rid of the reality TV defense that had been argued at the first trial and it, because obviously that was stupid. And instead, he took aim at the local police department accusing it of misconduct by staging the fake crime scene for that TV show, Cops. He alleged that the department made the fake scene way more than it ever was, just for the purpose of television, and that everything was highly embellished. So the verdict comes in on this new trial, and it was a three to three hung jury. This meant that Dahlia would have to go through a third trial. But before that third trial even happened, Dahlia gave birth to a son while she was on house arrest. Her baby's father, not Mike, not Mike 2.0, not Mohammed, but a guy named Robert Davis. And Robert Davis is no stranger to the system and has been arrested numerous times on charges ranging from aggravated battery, robbery, drug possession, grand theft, and even more. So Dahlia's third trial was in 2017. They again tried specifically attacking Mike's record and at the very end of their defense announced that she had an infant at home. Seems pretty calculated because you try to throw out everything and then you're gonna say, you know what, let me also throw out that she is a mom to an infant. Let's try to get the sympathy vote here. But yet again, good old Dahlia was found guilty once more. Dahlia's attorneys were obviously not happy about this outcome, but Mike sure was. Who could forget this video of Dahlia DiPolito crying into an officer's arms, thinking her husband was dead? The 2009 crime scene was staged, police said. An informant came to them saying Dahlia had hired him to kill her husband. Three trials later, a conviction today. The Boynton Beach woman immediately fingerprinted and handcuffed. Live team coverage tonight on what swayed the jury and the time Dahlia could serve. We begin with Michelle Casada. Dahlia DiPolito called out for her mom as a deputy tried to take her into custody. Six jurors found DiPolito guilty of hiring a hitman in 2009 to kill her then husband, Mike DiPolito. We're obviously devastated. DiPolito's defense team celebrated what was a victory for them in December when jurors were deadlocked in DiPolito's second trial. What changed the outcome of this trial? Her attorneys say prosecutors presented prior so-called bad acts that were kept out of previous trials. This alleged planting of uh, drugs on Mike DiPolito, the, this issue of allegedly poisoning Mike DiPolito. State prosecutors Laura Lori and Craig Williams hugged out their victory in the courtroom. A statement from the state attorney's office said, we are pleased that the hard work and perseverance of our prosecutors and staff have led to justice for this victim. DiPolito's ex-husband was called to testify for this trial. He did not testify in the last, but Dahlia's lawyers don't think that made the difference. This case was about demonizing Dahlia DiPolito. Mike DiPolito not publicly speaking till after sentencing. He released this statement. I'm 5,000% happy that justice was served once again. Mike playing off the infamous comment DiPolito makes when a hitman asked her if she was sure she wanted to go through with the murder for hire plot. 
We're positive, like 5,000 percent sure. DiPolito's lawyers argued police misconduct throughout the trial, saying detectives pressured the confidential informant and rushed the investigation to be featured on a cop's TV show. They say they will try to appeal the verdict. We're ready to fight. This fight's not over. Dahlia was sentenced to 16 years in state prison. In 2019, the Supreme Court rejected, without comment, a request for them to review her conviction. She has since run out of appeal options, and she will be in prison until 2032. An update provided by her attorney in 2020 discussed how painful it's been for Dahlia to be away from her son. But honestly, she knew that she was likely going to prison. She should have been smarter, and personally, I think that she got pregnant almost as a way to mitigate prison time so that she could raise her son. I think that she had the intention of having this baby and getting pregnant so that she could possibly play the sympathy card. That's my personal opinion, and I thought that she, I think that she was under the impression that maybe it would get her out of serving any sort of prison time, and maybe even make her appear more likable. I don't know. As for Mike, after the trial, he did an interview and showed off the new love of his life. Mohammed, the man who initially had tipped off the police, passed away in late 2021. So I don't know what happened to Mike Stanley either. I'm trying to figure out what happened to him. He's kind of flown under the radar a little bit. I'd love to know your thoughts and hear what you think about this case, though, because first of all, I think the fact that there were three trials, she's filing all these appeals, she's taking it to the Supreme Court, like, girl, give it up. You got caught on camera caught in 4k like give it up girl but also it's just mind-blowing why do people kill their spouse why do they hire hitman don't they know that they are going to get caught it's just so unreal to me it's so unreal to me and somebody to then go to all of these methods trying to kill them with antifreeze yourself trying to plant drugs on them and call the cops so that they get thrown back in jail then you're trying to hire hitman girl just move on to the next guy. Move on to the next John. Find your next meal ticket. This is too much work. It's too much work. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks so much for tuning in with me today. I hope you enjoyed the case coverage. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up on your way out or rate the podcast if you're listening to it on there. Thanks again for tuning in with me and until the next case, stay safe. Bye.